everything that everyone wants to see during this break and we're on track fernando alonso him and button there's an interesting rivalry but obviously he's still chasing the triple crown paul maybe this is a step toward it i can't wait to watch yeah it certainly looks like it and of course now we're talking guy who has some experience on this track albeit didn't get him into the race but again albeit not his problem and of course now you're going to notice that uh the uh disc the um the track itself you'll be going the other direction these the indianapolis 500 is 800 left hand turns and that's exactly what you're going to see today nothing but left turns expect these times to be super super close as well alonso onto a first fly there's five minutes qualifying as per usual and uh, they've all been getting a reasonable amount of practice in this week as the field gets more and more competitive but look how close these times are all going to be <laughs> let's see what alonso can do then through the final corners up to the line monario andretti had told me a number of times that uh, when you get out toward the wall that you actually feel a cushion against the wall that generally will keep it keep you off of it but uh, especially right here as we uh, come on to the main straightaway and see how tiny turn one is down there ahead uh, because of the grandstands towering over it that uh, that causes problems occasionally with them finding exact apex on the track look how close the times are as well as petter solberg goes to the top of the times buttons fifth our championship leader the times are going to keep tumbling because we're going to get more and more laps and they're going to build up more and more momentum which is critical it does look pretty scary i have to say driving one of these in the real thing would be terrifying and i imagine the sim is giving them a good taster of it let's see what mario andretti can do over the line then first lap for him and uh, the time's tumbling all the way What's Andretti going to do? Not a bad opening lap. Actually, very good. He's gotten through that area well as he comes off of two and onto the back stretch. And of course, the turn two, turn four, that's the key. So you get on those long five eighths of a mile back stretch. Uh, again, the track is flat, 9 degrees, 12 minutes of banking is all, 50 feet wide in the straightaways, 60 feet wide in the turns, and the car, the, the DW12, is named after, of course, Dan Weldon, uh, who won the Indianapolis 500, and they're very strong cars. They've lasted a number of years and expected to go quite a few more. Minute and a half left on the clock. The time's still coming down. Oriel Servia now on provisional pole. Petter Solberg jumps back to the top, though. Paul, how critical is this qualifying going to be? Because obviously, drafting, slipstreaming around this track is very different compared to what we've seen in previous weeks. Well, it's it, it, it's going to be interesting to me because uh, in I, I, I have to compare this to what reality may be. And in reality, you may actually see the... Uh, uh, draft beginning to feel it as far as 15 car lengths back. Uh, I'm not sure what the Masters have put into this today, but uh, we'll certainly see what, what, what's going to happen there. Uh, also, you got to remember that uh, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, unlike uh, everywhere else in the world, and certainly all the Formula One circuits, um, they, they don't look at speed um, uh, are at time, they look at speed, and right now we're seeing laps turned above 224 miles an hour. Last one there was 224.305. 25 seconds to go. Petter, Solberg, Button's gone up to second, which is crucial. Servia's matched his lap time. Of course, we are used to doing speed in, uh, in the real world, and you can compare that, but... Uh, this is basically going to be ordered on lap time. And at the moment, Petter Solbo by 9,000 is on pole as the time ticks down. I think he's going to get it. Alonso's gone fourth, but Solberg, the rally cross driver around Indy, <laughs> looks like he's got pole position. Yeah, that's pretty impressive stuff, seeing the guys that have basically never done it. Of course, maybe they've done it on their sims alone, but to see this on the track and in this beautiful format, that's very impressive for those top guys. Well, guys, I am so looking forward to this race. Petter Solberg on pole position, Button alongside him. And they're the two that we almost spoke about as 
How are they going to compete? How are they going to be towards the front of the order? Frankiti fifth, looking to add to his Indianapolis wins. And I feel a bit for um, Mario Andretti because he qualified something like 18th or 19th on the grid. But I think he was within a tenth of a second of the, of the front runners. So here they go. They're lining up behind the pace car now. Jolian Palmer, Paul Page. Here comes the race, All-Star Series race. The Legends Trophy at Indianapolis. And, of course, there we'll see the rolling start that is uh, so familiar to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Uh, lines of three for the Indianapolis 500, of course. And, uh, well, there's like Mario Dominguez, David Brabham. His uh, grandfather brought the uh, whole rear engine car concept to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and changed everything. Um, as you go back through the field and start to look for uh, some of the men who have done very, very well in terms of championships here, uh, it's kind of impressive the way the front of the field is essentially a bunch of rookies. So here I we are as they begin to line up. They go into so their cool. rows of two in this particular case. Solberg on the pole, button next to him. And there it is. Green flag out there. Accelerate to the start. Green flag. Go, go, go. And here are the spotters yelling, go, go, go. That's what they're doing. Clean through turn one, which is, of course, very important because they are so crowded up together. Great start from Solberg. Solberg. I wonder position. if he's ever done a Button rolling right start in his life. And he just made, made it great straight away. To come up. So, end of lap one, Button is in the lead, Alonso pulling it out alongside him. Those two go side by side into turn number one, and here comes Frank Eze, three-time Indy 500 winner, looking for the virtual milk this afternoon. We're riding with Solberg. You look at the three in front of them as they uh, maneuver back and forth, try to find where they're going to get into the turn, but sooner or later, they've got to get pretty far out. That is a, that's a pretty low entry into that turn. Frankiti out in front now. Two tenths of a second ahead of Button. Then it's Alonso in the blue machine. Those two going side by side now, although Button stays down in front. Adrian Fernandez going to the outside. Whoa, there's Ooh. Frankiti off. And Fernandez is in the sky. And immediately out of the race. So Button's still in front. Alonso made it through, but it looked as though Dario Frankiti has had uh, another big accident on an oval. More. More chaos in the background as well. There's a number of cars heading heavily into the wall. So we've got our first big incidents. The first few laps were very incident free, very pro. But uh, we've now had huge accident. For Frank Kitty and uh, Fernandez and loads more out in the background. I couldn't see who it was, but uh, now we're getting the chaos. Out front, Button takes the lead back from Alonso. The two old McLaren Formula One teammates duking it out, and they've made a bit of a gap back to Magnussen, Plato, and Serbia. Battle for first out in front. 
Magnuson running in third. Into turn one again. We're seeing some nice great racing here, Paul, and it really feels fast, even I know in the he game. Can't hold that pass. So it remains Alonso out in front at the Indianapolis 500, which we all expect to see someday. Wides in the main straightaway. Alonso, Button, Juan Magnuson, and now uh, another change in the top of the order. Back to the long front stretch. Wow, there's some good passing. You're actually doing on the front stretch about 250 miles an hour. It's, it's very pressing. Very impressive. As we go on board with Dominguez. Drivers Wait, all getting so place. close to each other. Look at this fight here. Battle for third. Magnuson, Servia, Plato, Jourdain, and Canaan. And uh, the group at the front as well. Button and Alonso still going hammer and tongs at it as well. Alonso looking like he's going to get a nice run. And uh, these two fighting very cleanly and trying to pull away from that big battle for third, which would be very, very important. Jack, it's kind of interesting that we see Castro Nevis back there and Tony Kanaan. Of course, Turner just got around Tony Kanaan in that battle. It's really a three-way battle for ninth. And here comes Tony Kanaan back. There, that's, the, that's the driver who actually wanted to race so badly that he came from Brazil to Italy and lived in the upstairs of a garage, and they had to lock him in at night. So you talk about a spirit and a drive. That's Tony Kanaan. Jack. Absolutely. Great to see Mario Andretti here. We're on board with him in the top right. He's in 25th. Hasn't had a great start, but he's running with Alonso and Button, the, the race leaders. 80-year-old Mario Andretti, if he had been in this fight and hadn't had uh, whatever troubles he's had, he would be able to keep with them. And he's almost got to think whether or not to pass Jensen Button and Alonso. And he's going to do it here, Mario. Oh, this Good could move. get Coming very, to the inside, very but can he hold here. it? Can he hold it? That's always the key. And yep, yep, he holds it very well. Oh, nice piece of driving there. You're on board looking with Mario Andretti as he comes onto the freight front stretch. Look at how tight they are. This will be a pass in turn one if they take advantage of the draft. Paul, when do you want to be in the lead of the race? Because we've got 14 minutes left. Does it does it matter who's in first or second now? Do you want to be leading or do you want to be following? Well, uh, as it's as it's being played out here, I would much prefer to be in second place uh, on the uh, back stretch coming uh, on the last lap. So that's uh, uh, that's where I would play it. Uh, of course, if if. We're talking the uh, the true Indianapolis 500. We'd be counting fuel. We'd be counting tire wear. Uh, so many things come into play, but this is just pure racing, and it's so good as Alonzo chases Button, Jack. 14 minutes left on the clock. Still Mario Andretti keeping up with those two. Then it's the Magnuson and Servia Plato. And apart from that one uh, big one involving Franchitti and then a little bit more chaos, it's been pretty clean so far, Jody, and I'm, you, I usually say that and then chaos unfolds, but it's been uh, good racing so far. Yeah, we've had that effect in the Legends races generally. Uh, Alonso and Button are, are driving really cleverly here. I bet Alonso's actually frustrated to have Andretti a lap down just behind him because otherwise they'd have a nice clear track back. But he's going to have to try and pass Jensen because at the moment, Magnussen, Servia and Plato, that, there's two bunches basically. The lead bunch, Button and Alonso, former F1 drivers, former teammates at McLaren. And then there's Magnussen, Servia and Plato. And the second group is catching Button and Alonso. And a little bump draft there from Alonso just <laughs> tapped the back of Button. And that's clearly what they're trying to do to, uh, to both pick up speed and keep ahead of, uh, of that chasing pack of Servia now ahead of Magnussen and Plato. In all the top five, though, you've only got one former IndyCar driver plus Fernando Alonso as well, who's, of course, done this race. But, um, yeah, there's uh, Jan Magnussen and Jason Plato doing great jobs as well in their first go of this. Also looking at quite a mix uh, back there, six down through 10th, uh, where Castro Nevis, Michelle Jourdain Jr. and uh, a 
especially Tony Kanaan, because he is right there. That's Tony Kanaan, and he'll stay in that position. He'll try to get further forward, but uh, once he has an eye on the lead, he's not going to let go. Look how close that battle for the front is, Jack. So close, Alonso and Button nose to tail. 12 minutes to go. Still Plato, Magnus and Serbia right together in that second bunch as um, Jolian pointed out. But this is where it kind of becomes a bit of a chess game, doesn't it? Rather than a motor race when you can see the focus on Button's eyes is unbelievable. Right behind Alonso and still Mario Andretti is there right behind them. He's a lap down on the leaders, but he's still enjoying chasing them and running with them. Yeah, I'm very impressed with the with the job Mario's doing. You know, 80-year-old man who has the heart of like a 17-year-old, and he still is flat out on it. Uh, Alonzo out in front there. One would think that if uh, if Button wants to try it, uh, into the first turn would be certainly in the draft where he is right there. But perhaps also part of the play is I'm going to stay here. I like this second place, and and maybe this will serve me on the final lap. Of course, with no damage as well, they can bump draft quite effectively. The front wing's not going to break on these things. So uh, they've been doing that a little bit. We saw Alonso give Jensen Button a little love tap a few laps ago. And now Button taking up that second place is in a really nice position, really. No pressure. Ten minutes still to go. And let's see, closes up to Alonso, but then just eases off, I think, not to, uh, to go side well, by side with the Spaniard into turn one. And both of them driving sensibly with their heads. They're just checking out from that group behind now. Five seconds back is Jan Magnussen. And this has become very quickly purely a two horse race. Bump drafting isn't actually allowed. So the stewards are going to be watching out for that. They'll have seen that little nudge. So I wonder if after sort of one go, Button thinks, oh, better not do that anymore because uh, they are going to be watching out for that, the, the stewards, as we see this fight now between Serbia in fifth, Plato fourth, and Kevin Magnussen in third position. There's Servio. He's got the heating on, hasn't he? Must be chilly. Look at this. How's that going to result? Heading into the turn. Hit it in one. Stay in, in the same. In. There's the VIP seat suites off to the right. And now to that long back stretch. There's that battle in the back I was talking. And look, we see both Turner and Max Pappas come up on the board as well as Brabham. Max, of course, is one of the stewards of the regular IndyCar series. And uh, uh, he, uh, in his day, was an awesome racer in the IndyCar. Serbia, three wide into turn one. Oh, oh that was close. Oh, that's high. I can't believe he pulled that off. That that very wide line is not what I would want to do in the true race car. And of course, one of the things that they don't feel, uh, which uh, the feedback is, every time they go into one of those corners, the uh, lateral G's, G forces are like five G's, pushes them, tries to push them out the right side of the car. So, and that part of the feel that they must feel to be able to be successful. Look at the rest of the field of all four up this bunch to third as well. That is your Canaan Jordan battle, and they're right with Plato, Serbia, and, and Magnussen. This is a replay. View from Button as he calm, pulls out on the main straight, times that one perfectly. Really an excellent pass. Timing is what it's all about. Magnussen running in third, Serbia fourth after uh, that little high moment earlier on has dropped Plato back a little bit. So he's a bit uh, adrift of them. Here come Magnussen and Servia, the Dane and the Spaniard, together down towards turn one again with eight minutes left. But look how quickly Plato caught up with the draft down that main straight. It just actually pulls you forward. Some drivers are, are surprised by it, even, especially on the start of the race, and any time they're closely running. So there's the dart out. We'll see if it can be held going into the third turn. Plato, oh, that ahead is some of incredibly tight racing. Oh! 
bit of a bump Jack, there. have you ever seen anything like this? That was up high. Line. That was almost He's the wall. Right. Whoa! And that is the wall. The wall in the sky, and you see Serbia's annoyance as he whacks the escape key. Still, Button and Alonso out front, with Mario Andretti uh, in behind them still. But uh, Button and Alonso fighting for the win as they come down the back straight. Of course, Mario is learning a great deal now. I'm impressed that he's finally found pace with the leaders. And despite being a lack down, this is an education for Mario. And we may see him do very well on another occasion. Pappas that occasion and, could be uh, later on. Pastor Nevis still in the back, running at 8th and ninth. Two veterans. There's Max in 8th. Uh, now, in, now in seven, so nice little pass there. While we know that the turns here are all, all in identical, actually, there's Mario. Look at that, he's chewing. <laughs> he's got some gum. <laughs> he's concentrating so hard. We, uh, we do know that the, uh, the, the track here, even though it is. Uh, really a rectangle, symmetrical, quarter mile turns, five eighths of a mile straight away, it's quarter mile up on the short shoots. Every turn is entirely different, even though physically they are the same. It's, it's really something when you hear the drivers, if they permit you to sit and talk about what they've been doing. The other thing too is you, with the draft, can control the car in front of you. If you get out on the right rear of that car in front of you, you can lift up the right rear aerodynamically. And of course, that's going to create a loose position for the guy that you're, uh, you're doing that to. Move to the inside, different. You're, you're going to go into an oversteer. Five minutes to go. Jordan and Kanan are right up in that pack now. Jordan's up to third. So that early breakaway group of Magnussen Plato and Oriel Servia has come to nothing. We've got a yellow in sector one. We've got a big crash. I think it was Plato that uh, that was in the wall there, falling backwards. But still Button and Alonso out in front. And as you say, and Jordan, I think, was involved in that too. So Magnuson, Canaan, Montero are now this three for third place. Still Button and Alonso right together with less than five minutes left on the clock. Then you see Jan Magnuson. And are we going to go three wide here? Montero to the inside oh. in the turn one. This is going to be tight. Oh. And that's, whoa. Oh, that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. So close, so tight. Button, Alonzo Montero, Magnuson, Tony Kanan. We pointed him out. He's just inching his way forward. TK, as we call him, he. He really is a competitor beyond belief, and he's been doing it for years, and I don't see him losing anything of his skill. Front stretch once again on board with Alonzo. Sure, are looking forward to seeing him back at the Indianapolis 500, now scheduled for the 23rd of August this year. The virus does not help us. As around the world, COVID-19 has done a lot of damage, but the good news is that automobile racing, uh, you can figure out a way to do it. Uh, NASCAR, for example, has done it without fans in the, in the stands and run several races in a row. Uh, the Indianapolis cars will go to their first live on track when they go to the uh, Texas World Speedway, one of the fastest and most challenging tracks on the circuit. Button still in front. Alonso, then Magnuson, Montero. Kanan has dropped back to fifth. Turner, then Brabham. Scott Pruitt is up into the top 10 now, followed by Montoya. And Montoya drops out of it. It's interesting for Montoya, two time winner. Let's see if this pass can be made. Looks pretty good. That's awfully low and awfully side by side. Ooh. Nope. It's. It's not going to happen. Montoya is a two-time winner, uh, has his image twice on the world-famous Borg Warner Trophy. I've got the image of that uh, behind me and here in the room, as well as one of uh, Fernandez's helmets. And uh, the, uh, 
the Borg Warner Trophy for Juan. In one place, they call him Juan, because when he was in IndyCars, that's what they wanted him to be called. And then, of course, when he won his second 500, coming off of Formula One and everything, he's full on into being Juan Pablo. So two different names, same face on the trophy. Jack? Two minutes to go, two minutes left to run, and Alonso is still happy to just sit behind Jensen Button in the battle for the lead. Magnussen and Montero is the fight we've been watching for third place, but now with less than two minutes on the clock, it's all about Alonso versus Button for the win in the Legends Trophy. Alonso goes for it now, down into three, has the inside line. Surely neither of them are gonna to want to be leading onto the final lap. The slipstream's so huge that uh, oh Whoa. not a big accident in front that's no oh, they've done well to get around that it might have been castro neves but uh, here we go then barely any time left and now alonso in the lead from button the slipstream effect is big here comes jensen button chasing alonso and what will they do in terms of tactics now uh, again we're talking about second place if you want to win that's the perfect place to be the distance between both Alonso and Button is, a little, well, now it's closing in. It was a little further than I wanted to see. Is he going to make this happen? And he does. Button goes to the lead. Alonso second. Magnuson remains in third, but he's well back. Now, looks like Alonso is going to try to come back at him. Two very thinking away drivers we'll that there. Tail, Jack. Wise guys. And now they've got to battle it out with just about a lap to go to see who can win this strategic battle. This is fascinating. Looking on board, that's uh, button up ahead. Wow, this is so good, so tight. And again, the aerodynamics make all the difference in the world. Interestingly though, the cars themselves uh, unlike, for example, Formula One, uh, you can't make that many adjustments to them. They're, they're, uh, uh, they're not to be changed all that much. And here goes Alonso, and he goes into the lead. At the line! Wow! Amazing stuff there. So I think this is now, I think that's the white flag. So I think we're now on the final lap of the race. Button had a big moment coming out of uh, turn four that time around. They're on the back straight. Two corners to go, Paul Page. Alonso v. Button. Button's trying. He's on the outside. Alonso sitting down quicker. He's in control of the race at this moment. And as we come off of the fourth turn, we have to keep an eye on Button and see what he's going to do. But it looks like it's Alonso all the way here. He can dart out here. And no. A little too late, a little too late. Alonzo takes the win here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. His first, and it's a sim, but I'm gonna see it in real time, I'm sure. What a drive, Paul. what a race between Alonso and Button. Less than a tenth of a second between them across the line. That was absolutely brilliant. Button second, Magnuson finishes in third place ahead of uh, Tiago Montero. I loved that. I have to say, that was absolutely brilliant. And hopefully in the reverse grid, we'll see, uh, you know, maybe a few more fights up at the front, a few more cars involved, but Alonso versus Button for the win. I thought Button was gonna do it. He was in, he was in the right place. So uh, I think we can speak to him now. We're just getting a replay of Alonso versus Button at the line pulled out right there and i think it was seven hundredths of a second between them as they came across the line fernando alonso winning the legends trophy race at the indianapolis motor speedway on the oval circuit thrilling stuff and uh button finishing in second position i think we can speak to jensen now jensen that was a great fight it looked pretty intense i gotta say between uh, you and fernando for the whole race yeah, as soon as we got a bit of a gap, um, I think it was like three or four, a couple of car lengths, the cars behind, then you got to work together, which was pretty good, actually. Um, and then we just pulled away. But the problem is when you're behind, you know, you're getting a lot more oversteer uh, through the corners, so it's difficult to fight. And then with one lap to go, I don't know, I don't think Fernando tapped me coming onto the main straight. I think it was just a, 
um, because we were so close. But I got a massive snap of oversteer, and that really cost my position in terms of trying to lead the last lap. Because uh, you got to be you got to be leading the last lap to, to actually win. Because uh, you can't ever take it the guys blocking. So, uh, but awesome, really good fun. And you always want to win this race, uh, but a great battle. Uh, hopefully, we did it proud, the Indy 500. And it's also good for my championship. This is Paul Page. Yeah, exactly. We were talking earlier about how, despite them the, 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 physically the same, the turns are all different at Indianapolis. Did you find that to be true? Yeah, but very there's a different. different character in every one of them. Yeah, and yeah, because obviously they're, they're, they're slightly different steering angles, but it's not just that. It's it's the the roughness of the circuit. You feel the bumps on entry um, right. into turn three. Uh, so yeah, they're all a little bit different, and I don't know what it's like in reality. Obviously, Fernando knows <laughs> most of these guys, but uh, I'm, you know, I was a virgin in the in the uh, now, but it was a, a a great fun race. Really, really enjoyed that, and it's so much tougher than you think. And I also get, I know this sounds weird, but I really struggle with getting dizzy. <laughs> really? Yeah, and that was 30 laps, so I can't imagine a whole race. It must be insane. <laughs> yeah, the, the concentration needed to be that precise is, uh, is pretty insane. Yeah, the focus right. well, for really 200 laps, watching 800, 800 left turns, Fernando, 500 great miles. Battle, and, uh, I don't look know forward how to the they do grid. it. They're remarkable. Thanks, guys. But we'll take a look at that field now with uh, um, Brian Herta sitting right there in the second row and Brabham, Dominguez. Uh, those are some nice, nice lineup. But look at Mario Andretti sitting there in eighth place. Keep an eye on him. He has a reputation for really getting good starts. Scott Pruitt, you spoke to him earlier. Max Pappas, who I think is an incredible driver and uh, ran many Indy car races. Elio, Elio's the best, the Spider Man. Maybe he'll get to climb the fence today. And uh, of course, Team Montoya. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. So they're out there. They're on the course as we go through the remainder of the field. Michelle Jordan and Dario Franchitti, well, back in the field. The, the, the reverse grid, I'm, I like it. I like it. I'm not sure I'd like it in reality, but I like this very much. So there's Alonzo Servia button and Solberg there, that's that's the back end of the whole thing. And so uh, they have their work cut out for them. And as you saw in the first race, it's a very little opportunity for someone to um, really move up quickly when you're talking on the oval. So we'll see how that works for us as they come through the final turns and the field is ready to go. Look at that front row. They're lining up over one of the tunnels. And now we take a look at the start finish line just ahead. Interesting how they've staggered themselves. And here we go. We're into the green flag and racing is underway at Indianapolis virtually. And we're seeing the guys move up quickly. Look at the battle here going with Brian Herta as well. Salo's in there. He is the leader of the race. Herta right behind him. Bravham moving up a bit. Fittipaldi is right there. Uh, as is, uh, well, Castro Nevis just comes around through it. Look at the advance that Elio Castro Nevis is making. That's pretty spectacular. They're all realizing that they have to get up to the front on a race like this just as fast as they can. Of course, the other side of that is you have to be incredibly careful when you're doing that sort of thing. Jack? Yeah, it is Servia who is in front at the moment. That's Mikasalo. We're looking at the bottom left. Sorry, it's not Servia. My apologies. It's uh, Mikasalo in the bottom left that is leading. That's the concentration we see. Uh, Herta is to the outside there on the right. We're riding with Tony Oliuzzi and Emerson Fittipaldi were on board within 10th place in the top right, but he's just lost a little bit of ground. So Salo in front of Herta, in front of Liuzzi, the Servia name there is a bit of a bug at the moment. Hopefully that'll disappear as the race goes on. Alonso is up to Savannah sixth place to already. Spoke with Herta the other day. He is, of course, the guy who talks Alexander Rossi around the course. He's the tactician for that track. And uh, of course, then his son, Colin Herta, is driving now in the Indy cars. And that kid is spectacular. It's just, it's almost sim racing for him. It doesn't seem to be a problem with throwing the car sideways. 
So Serbia goes to the front, Salo second. There's a battle for third. So towards the turns three and four, it's Salo Liuzzi and now Brabham. Brabham's in there for the lead and Brabham takes the lead. What a great move from David Brabham. He's up into first place, ignores Servia on the top left. That is a, an error, but it is Brabham in first, Salo second, Liuzzi third, and then Herta and Castro Neves side by side in fourth and fifth. Servi, of course, a Catalonian, and uh, he is uh, very competent. I really like him. He's small. He's uh, almost tiny, but he has so much energy and drives so well. So Servia, then you're sitting with Brabham, of course, and he has so much Indianapolis tradition behind him and riding in that cockpit. Side by side, we see them go. So Mika Salo. The race leader now, Liuzzi in the orange car, trying to get up into second, but there to the bottom goes Herta and hits Liuzzi. And oh. Herta goes around. Liuzzi manages to keep on his way. So Salo leads. The Finnish Formula One driver is in first place. Brabham in second, David Brabham and Fernando Alonso now up into third position with Thiago Montero in fourth. So Alonso, Jolian, has climbed up the order. Well, he made such a great start to come through the field. And now with that contact as well, it's uh, up into third. And you can see the race lead already. Alonso, the winner from the earlier race, has got a great chance to double up. Still Brabham leading Salo. The two of them with a good two-second cushion to Fernando Alonso and Thiago Montero. But I can just see that uh, that gap could come down. And uh, Alonso is going to be in this race win fight again, I think. Jensen Button, by the way, is 11th, just outside of the top 10. I think it's amazing how quickly Alonso was able to move his way to the front, knowing that you have to be so careful in doing that. Here we go, side by side yet once again. So again, Brabham here leading. at the Speedway, Salo's the timings second. are so critical when you want to make those passes. You you don't want to get out and then have to come back in because then you lose all your mo momentum. And generally speaking, it's a lap or two before you can get back into that position. Through the short shoot. Brabham looking very good there. Alonzo, he's spectacular. What a race driver this man is. He's amazing, isn't he? But he's under pressure from Montero. 15 minutes left on the clock. Salo back in front. He's got ahead Whoa. of Brabham. And then it is, oh, a big hit there. Castro Neves and Liuzzi hitting each other. You kind of saw that coming. It was telegraphed a little bit. Um, fortunately, the damage factors in this uh, are not as real as Speedway in real time. That would have been disastrous. But virtual racing, yeah, this is so cool. They just keep going. <laughs> Here's uh, the fight again. Alonso in the fight for the lead now. We're riding with Alonso. To the right is David Brabham. To the left is Mika Salo. How much is their hearts going to sink when they see Fernando Alonso five minutes into the race is already battling with them for the lead? That's the last thing they want. The guy that's just won and started from the back right up into the mix. And uh, Salo and Brabham have been driving really nice races, but they've not fundamentally been as quick as Alonso. But of course, probably Alonso will never break away from them at this pace. The draft is too big and we're going to be into a big old game of cat and mouse again with the top four. As we watch Alonso down on the inside there, it's uh, and we go on board. It's not just the draft behind them, but also the turbulence. Now he goes out past the wake, moves to the front, but can he hold that position? And he does. He forces his way up into the front and once again, a new leader. So Alonso out in front, Salo Montero and Brabham are the four fighting for the lead of the race. Ignore the Oriol Servia message up at the top saying he's leading. He is not. He's further back in the order. It's a bit of an error with the timing system. But it is Salo, Alonso, Montero, Brabham, the four for the lead. 13 minutes to go. Salo made nice moves to put himself in that position. But as you see, Alonso's having none of it. 
Uh, neither, uh, for that matter, is Brabham, who's worrying the guys in front of him as hard as he can. They're really keeping everybody on their toes here. Oh, that's a main, that's a dangerous dive to make that turn. Alonso just put his wheels on the inside grooves, I think, and had a huge slide skating the whole way across the track. And when he came back correcting it, almost sideswiped Montero, similar right. to Liuzzi earlier on in the race, but they both got away with it. But I think Alonso just dropped slightly too low in that bend. Well, it's so precise, as you well know, as we take a look at the go side by side once again, Alonso trying to make a move sitting in the right position, but look down on the inside. Well done. This is absolutely amazing. This, this has so much reality to it. There's Alonzo, kind of pushing to the outside. I, excuse me, knocking on your door. I'd like to come through here. Crash in the background. Don't see who dropped it, but it was out of about sixth or seventh place. Someone spat to the inside out of the final corner. Hasn't changed the lead battle. And a spin to the back stretch. That's going to change some things. Salo. 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 John Mentaro, Alonso Brabham appears to be the order right now. And uh, take a look at Montero as he rides on the back end of Alonso. Onto the front straight again. Searching for that first turn. I'm surprised that this many cars are still this close with uh, just uh, over 11 minutes, 50 seconds to go. Um, we still have the field fairly close in, but then you get further back and no, that's, uh, there's quite a gap there. Mika Salo then dropped it out of that lead pack and he's down to the fringes of the top 10. He's managed to carry on, but early race lead is gone. And uh, you're, you're right, Paul, we still got kind of two and a half. David Brabham's desperate to stick with these top two of Montero and Alonso. If he can't do it, then we're back into what looks to be a two-car race. Jensen Button, Alonso's rival from race one, is now up to fourth place, though. That's good. And as he comes forward, that's going to add more complexity to this battle at the front. And you see how that occurs there. It puts uh, Fernando out in front of the race. Alonso is now reading the race, but I don't think it will be for long. There's some pretty anxious competition behind him. Down into the corner, everybody maintains their position across the north chute, turning toward the main straightaway. Pit lane would be off to their left, should they have needed it. Fortunately, they don't need it today. Look how tight, though. Look how tight. And look at Brabham, just back there, kind of, kind of watching this, seeing what's going on in front of him. 3. Dario Franchini, you see the upper right, he's got a wide road ahead of him. No one really to contest in the front. And there you go with another, another lead change as Montero goes to the front, Alonso second, Brabham third, and Button. He's right up there now, fourth place, Castro Neves right behind him. Franchitti and Montoya, they're making their moves too. They're at the back end of the top 10, but look how fast all of these positions change. Jack, are you loving this? This is brilliant, isn't it? Like, it's, just, it's such a pleasure Whoa! to have you here, Paul, calling this, just so I don't have to do it and I can just sit back and watch these legends racing against each other. There is Castro Neves in the top right. He's right behind Jensen Button in that fourth place battle. Montero going for the lead again. I thought Brabham was back in this front three, but then he seems to have dropped away a little right. bit in the last uh, couple of laps. So he's not quite there at the front. It's still Alonso versus Montero for the win. Nine minutes to go. And I think Franchitti had a, had a bit of a moment in all of that because he was up, as you said, up into eighth place. Then as soon as we looked at him, he seemed to be dropping down the order. But this is brilliant stuff. If Alonso makes it two out of two, what a performance that'll be. Well, with uh, just under nine minutes to go, Alonso and Montero continue to battle as Alonso drops to second. Montero takes the lead. Brabham remains in third, but somewhat back. You want to keep track of Button. He's been very impressive. Now, can he make it out and around Brabham and get in contact with the leaders? 
Look at this. Look how he pokes that, pokes the nose right up under the wing of the car in front of him. Montero takes the corner nicely. Alonso comes out just as far. Again, this is all about momentum. You can drive this track. Whoa, Alonso is going to try for it. I don't think that's going to be a try. I think that he's got it done. So Alonso comes back to the lead. This is unbelievable. This is a great race. <laughs> So the top four there, you saw them all together on the straight. Alonso, Montero, Button, Brabham's now back into the play. Let's take a look at this. This is Alonso trying that move to the inside. Side by side they are, he's just off the right side. Best entry is kind of mid-track to that turn, though you'd really like to try and enter it from the high side. Button's ahead of Brabham. Oh! We almost saw a problem there with Alonso. He takes the lead back. Lost the back end a little bit there. That Brabham Button Castro Neves fight over third place is super tight. That's what we're seeing in the top right. Castro Neves we're riding with. Then it's Brabham in front of him. Then it's Button in front of him. While on the main screen, we see Alonso and Montero wheel to wheel for the lead of the race is Montero going to come back through goes to the inside for three and he does and it's still side by side between Brabham and Butter for third unbelievable seeing them fight back and forth it puts me in mind of many Indianapolis 500 mile races we've seen so Montero back to the front then Alonso then a bit back Button Castro Nevis Castro Nevis is no doubt learning from Button as he tucks in behind him and uh, Button, he's, he's still, in my point of view, very much in this race, despite how far back he is, with just under six and a half minutes to go. Yeah, the gap is coming down. There's no doubt about that. But he needs to work with the guys around him, I guess, Paul, if they want to close in on the leaders. They can't be too, fighting too much. Yeah, you, you need some help from the guy in front of you. And you also, since you are capable of controlling the car in front of you, when you're very up close to some degree, uh, you need to decide when you're going to actually make that happen because uh, you don't want to telegraph what you're going to do on the final lap uh, too soon in the race. Right now, though, with Montero, Alonso, Bravin, Button, Castro Nevis, but the first three are right together. Here comes another move for the front. And just that easy. That's really, really great. <laughs> Alonso and back in the And now first Button end. has made his move. Alonso, Montero, Button, Brabham, Castro Nevis. Look at Elio there, Five. that bright yellow car. Five minutes to go. And Montero back in front of Button, uh, back in front of Alonso, sorry, as they come into turn number one. I can't believe this back and forth battling at the front of the field. It's something you never really see. Uh, it has happened, but back and forth constantly. It puts me in mind actually years and years ago to the 1960 Indianapolis 500, uh, which was eventually won by, uh, um, I have a brain fade, but that was a, a back and forth. And Jim Rathman finally took the win of that race. But the same thing, almost every corner changing constantly. And that's what we're seeing here. Alonso back to the front again. And we'll see if he'll remain there when we get to the second turn. A record 29 lead changes that year in 1960. Jim Rathman and Roger Ward. It is There's Emerson Fittipaldi in the bottom left, Paul. Great to see him driving. Alonso to the inside. Brabham closing on button. It's always uh, been an interesting thing to me. And just mentioned it earlier and that is uh, if, if you're Formula One 
generally something is referred to as a shunt. In the United States, we wreck or we have crashes. Look at that, look at that, that's just unbelievable. And then in a, a book called Stroker Ace, which was a hilarious book about the Indianapolis 500, at one point the legendary, uh, but not real driver Stroker said that a shunt is just a dented fender trying to pass itself off as a wreck. So no offense, no offense there. <laughs> So Look there the is uh, Emerson Fittipaldi running in 13th place, the 73-year-old Brazilian having a, a good drive, you have to say, in 13th position. Andretti's in 19th, so I think he's been in some of those wrecks uh, up at the front. Brabham, Castroneves and Button are now just one and a half seconds back from Alonso and Montero. It was up at three seconds before, so they're closing in on the leading two. With just two minutes, 35 seconds to go. Alonso has it right now. Can he hold it? Now we're also seeing some traffic just ahead. That can figure into the finish. Hopefully the traffic will understand that that's the leaders coming up behind them and will give way to them. But it doesn't always happen that way. Alonso, of course, is doing everything he can to uh, create a little turbulence to the back there, gets down inside the corner. Montero stays with him. Castro Nevis is just back. Button, Brabham. This race is not by any means decided yet. Just under two minutes to go. Look how close that uh, next three are. Castro Neves, Button and Brabham closing in. What is gonna happen here with this traffic that they're coming up to? Alonso and Montero, how much time will they lose? Exactly, and then What's that going to mean for Castro Nevis and Button? If they're going to lose time coming up behind these cars, then that's going to close the front of the field down very, very tight. Then also you have to figure out how to get around them. Alonzo, Montero, Button, Castro Nevis, Brabham, and your top five. Traffic ahead. This is going to get busy. Everybody good through one and two. Now the wide open black back straight away. Montero's gonna try it once again. Unbelievable. But this time, is he gonna take a uh, button with him? Cast Nevis comes in uh, on this fight as well. Montero behind Alonso. Castro Nevis a bit back behind uh, Alonso to the front now, Montero, and then Castro Nevis a bit further back. So Alonso in front, Montero with him in second place. They are uh, coming up to pass Tom Coronel in the yellow and red car, who's one of the back markers. In the top, you're seeing Button right behind Castro Nevis. I think they're not going to be able to join the lead fight. Here comes Alonso, still in front of Montero. And he's got a bit of a gap now, six tenths, as we're riding with Montero chasing down Alonso as they come past Whoa. Coronel. Now we're, the time has run. Let's see how this lap runs. And that's the checkered flag. That's the final lap. And it's the win for Fernando Alonso again. A double race winner at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Amazing stuff, Paul unbelievable and it's i think it's predictive as i've said before he's such a good guy he learns so quickly as you see just with the sim racing as well in this whole virtual world so uh yeah he will be at indianapolis and i suspect for several more years and uh, if he gets the a proper uh, team supporting him then i think you're going to see another three perhaps four-time champion but then guys like Elio Castro Nevis, who's trying to get up there as well, those numbers are very important to each of these drivers. Most of them consider, all right, you got your Formula One championship, you got everything else, but Indianapolis is, is the pinnacle. And Fernando Alonso sits on the pinnacle right now. Well, what a great reverse grid and legends trophy race that was. As far as the championship is concerned, Buttons had another great race. Look, Emanuele Pirro 
not really troubling the front in these ovals. So as a result, I think uh, Button's lead is going to be pretty healthy after this one going into the title finale next week. But uh, great to see these legends racing on the Indianapolis oval circuit. And uh, I think from all of us, Paul Page, it's been an absolute pleasure having you call these what a races. Fun. Such so fun. Thank memories you. coming back. It's It's been brilliant. Uh, Max Pappas finishing further down the order in uh, 11th place. Plato 12th. Jan Magnussen. Look at my guy Mario down the there. End. 19th. Yeah. Mario Andretti finishing in 19th place. A shame he couldn't keep with the, with the guys at the, at the front in the end. But still, this is his first, you know, um, delve into this kind of racing. These other guys have been doing it for weeks now. So a two-time... Uh, Indy winner, two-time F1 champion, two-time Le Mans winner, Fernando Alonso. He's got the double triple crown. Fernando Alonso, thank you very much for joining us. Two wins at Indianapolis. What a, were you expecting that? Uh, not at all. Not at all. Uh, <laughs> first of all, I think it has been uh, super enjoyable uh, last weekend and uh, this week's practice as well. Every night we we here with the guys and uh, we chat on, uh, on the group of WhatsApp and uh, you know we try to, to put a good show on the weekends. I'm very new on this. I only received the rig uh, last Thursday before Zambor. Um, and yeah, after one week and a half, I'm still playing with some buttons. But uh, yeah, it was it was great today and uh, obviously I think good fun always uh, the Indianapolis Speedway. We really enjoyed your fight with Jensen Button in particular in the first race. How did you think you had that one? Because he had the lead going into the last lap almost. Yeah, no, no. Obviously, I, I was uh, super scared of, uh, of losing the race. Uh, I know Jensen is a very smart guy. And, uh, you know, we're both playing games, uh, trying to be in front or behind and trying to study the other one. But, uh, you know, with Jensen, you never know. He's uh, always one step ahead. And uh, I, I was uh, very worried that uh, the, the wind could slip. But, you know, it, it was OK. He had a moment in 10 four, I think one lap before the end. And that was uh, enough on a, of a gap uh, in my case. Great. Congratulations. Thank you very much for joining us. See you next week. See you, guys. Thanks.